Hi, everybody. This is day three since I first seeded the cell. So I consider the first seeding day as day zero. Um, and then on day two, which was yesterday, I went ahead and fed the cells like you saw, saw in the previous video. So today, I know I'm going to have to pathogen them because they were getting pretty close yesterday. Okay, before we get to the actual in-lab work, I do want to talk about uh, lab notebook a little bit. And so this is the lab notebook entry I would have made um, to prepare for today's lab. Um, just, you know, here are my plans. I don't need all the little details like of how I'm going to do this. I know what the word passage cells means. Um, and so this is why this is what I would write in my lab notebook if I was doing research. Um, and then under that result, I would just be ready to like, okay, this is where I'm recording my cell counts. And this is what I'm recording what actually happened in lab. So I already have my stuff ready. I already have my biological safety cabinet up and working. I have uh, media PBS and then some trypsin I'm thawing out in the water bath. So let's go first to the incubator and look at the cells. So if you remember, we have two flasks in here. One of them I centrifuged before plating it, and the other one I just kind of plated straight out of the cryo vial. Um, and so I don't need to keep propagating both those cell lines or cell flasks. I'm just going to choose whichever one looks best and then split it into a couple more flasks today. The other one I'll just I'll count those cells. So we're going to count both flasks of cells, but we're not actually going to uh, keep both of them. Okay, so first we'll look at the cells that were uh, not centrifuged. Okay, and you can see that they are really very, very confluent. Um, probably a little too confluent. Um, there's pretty much cells everywhere. So this is what I would definitely call 100% confluent on cells. Uh, we see almost no blank spaces at all. Even though some of those areas that look blank, there's still cytoskeleton in a lot of those areas. Like that's a big flat round cell in the middle there. Okay, so those look definitely ready to passage. Now I'll go ahead and look at the ones that were... So those were not centrifuged. These are the ones that are centrifuged. Okay, and this is looking more like a good time to passage with these, right? Like there is some space in between cells. Um, so this is where you might call 80 to 90% confluency um, rather than the other, which was definitely 100%. Okay, so let's go ahead and passage these. First, we're going to count them both, but we will uh, then passage them. Okay, so I'm probably just going to passage the ones that we did not centrifuge just for kicks. Um, there were more cells there, um, but I don't know that it really matters a whole lot. So I'm putting everything into the biological safety cabinet first. So I know I'm going to need two of these 15 mil tubes, one for each when we collect the cells. Uh, and then I'm going to use two of these flasks. Uh, so this is a new bag of five flasks. I could open it up and take out five flasks or the two flasks that I need. But instead, I'm just going to go ahead and spray this whole bag. So actually, inside that bag, they sterilized. Uh, so that's, that's just an extra layer of protection to make sure those things st stay sterile. Uh, I'll open that bag in there, and then once we get it out, uh, you know, it'll still be sterile inside the flask, and that's the most important thing. Okay, so I also need to get my media and my trypsin. Again, if there's any place in this lab that has a chance of getting nasty, it's in a warm, moist area, so I'm going to really make sure these get disinfected well. So I'm just noting I have like a 20-ish mLs of media in that one, and about 25 to 30 mLs of PPS. I just want to make sure I don't run out, and that's full 50. Now, if you're really good, uh, you could actually passage both of these at the same time. And I think that's what I'm going to show you. Uh, I will have to work fast through it because so when one of them 
is in the incubator for like four minutes, that's when you can go ahead and get the trips in in the other one. Uh, and so that's what I'm going to do just to show you how it works. I would not encourage you to do that if you feel like you just need to take your time and get practice at, at being good at, at cell culture. Okay, so I'm going to open this and get out my two flasks. And I'm going to go ahead and actually just take this back out. That way it's not in the way. Put my trash in the trash bin over there. Of course I need to spray my hands again. Okay, so as I said, uh, this is something that if you're good at and can practice, uh, you can probably do two of these at a time. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to first aspirate out the media, and I'm going to add some PBS to wash, aspirate out the PBS, add some trypsin, and then we're going to aspirate out the trypsin uh, after it's done its work for a while. I'm going to go ahead and get this down too. I'm going to go ahead and take this lid very carefully, turn it over, I can put it on there. And so you guys should know why we have to wash with PBS before we add trypsin. That's always a good quiz question. Grab about 10 mils of PBS. It doesn't really matter. We don't need to be exact on how much we grab. We're just washing. So if you notice, I'm only keeping one thing open at a time that prevents contamination. Very careful with my lid. So got the PBS. Okay, now I'm going to add four mils of trypsin, and this is where things start to be timely. So I'm going to let the trypsin act for about 30 seconds on there, and I'm going to basically count count that. So this new thing of trypsin, I'm just going to pipette up and down once or twice just to make sure it got all mixed well after thawing. So I'm going to get to four mil, so that's at the one mil mark on this five mil pipetter. Oops, I do not want to suck yet. My foot's bumping that thing. Okay, close it. I'm going to rest. Make sure it's spread everywhere. I'm going to start counting. One, one thousand. Two, one thousand. Three, one thousand. Okay, so I think we're close to 30 seconds here. Aspirate out this trypsin. So we, we just wanted a little bit of trypsin in there. It kind of got into the cells. It started doing its work. We don't want the excess trypsin because uh, we, we're just going to, we're not going to have to worry about centrifuging it off later. So we're just going to put as little trypsin as we can. Okay, so now I'm going to head to the incubator. Again, this came straight out of the cabinet, so it's already as about as clean as possible, so I don't need to worry too much about spraying. All right, so now I'm going to start a timer for four minutes, which I have here. Let's go ahead and just hit start. Start. There it goes. And now we're going to work on the other flask. Again, I have four minutes to do this. It goes by quick, so I'm going to do it quickly.
So the second one is the one I did centrifuge. Uh-oh, I'm losing time. Okay, so that's bad. You know what? I dropped that cap. I'm just not gonna use that PBS anymore. Like there's only a little bit left in there. Just don't need to worry about that. Not that big a deal. Okay, wash with PBS. Very careful with the cap. Aspirate out the PBS. Now I'm going to add some trypsin. Four mils is what I'm going for. I don't really need to be perfect on that either, but I do want to leave four mils for the next person to use those last four mils. Okay, coat the bottom real good and start counting. Okay, so I said this PBS is no good. Uh, I'm just gonna make sure I kind of leave it down there. Look at the clock, we're at 2.38, so we're in good shape. Okay, I'm gonna suck off this trips in. lid back on. So I'm always putting the lid back on before I do anything else like get rid of this pipette tip. Okay, so now we put this in the incubator. It's three minutes exactly. So I'm going to remember that. It's three minutes from putting this in, so I need to recover this one at seven. I have to remember which is which. I'm going to put this on the side. It's one of those tricks. You always have to remember um, what you're doing here. All right, so we are at 323-ish. Let's go ahead and get it out now, so we I can show you maybe what it looks like, and we'll we'll decide if it's if it's unattached cells or not. So we're gonna head over to the microscope to check it out. Okay, and the cells are all rounded really well. Uh, you see, there was a couple, maybe still attached. That's maybe okay. We're just going to kind of give it a little hit with our hand. Yeah, so all the cells are pretty much attached. They're moving around. We're in good shape on those. Now I'm going to go ahead and resuspend these in eight milliliters of, um, of media. And then we're just going to go ahead and seed one eighth of the cells into the two new flasks. Uh, so in order to do that, I'm going to grab eight milliliters from here. It's, it's, this is where maybe getting things just right is very good because you want to make sure that you know how many cells you had. Okay, so eight. You know, now I don't really care about this cap anymore because this flask is done for, so it doesn't really matter a whole lot. Uh, I do want to make sure I don't contaminate those cells that are inside. That cap doesn't matter anymore. Just kind of shake it around. I might even suck it up and spray down just to make sure I got all the cells. Okay, and now we're going to suck these cells up. This is where having this leaky pipetter does not do us very good. 
you be careful not to make too many bubbles by over sucking air in there. All right, I'm gonna put the cells in there. There we go, they're safe. This doesn't matter. I am gonna label this because I don't wanna forget which is which. Not centrifuged. And now we look at our clock. We're at about 6, 11, 6, 13. So last time it only took um, 3.30 and the cells were detached pretty well. So I think we can do the same here. Remember we put it in about three minutes. So I'm gonna give it a couple more seconds. All right, we'll head over that way. Again, I'll look at these in the microscope. Okay, these also look pretty good. I'll tap on the sides. Just kind of make sure. Yeah, you can see we got all our cells kind of floating around there. That looks good. Head back over. Spray our flask. Okay, now we want to retrieve these with eight mils of media, which I do have enough in there. This one I'm not gonna seed, so retrieving with eight mils of media was is less important here. But I do want to know the total number of cells, so I do want to keep it the same when, if I'm comparing between the two flasks. Eight mils. Again, I don't really care about that cap. Make sure I get all the cells off the bottom, suck them up, spray down the bottom real good. Okay, I have my cells. They're in that liquid. Got a little more bubbles there. And we're going to put it in this other tube. Okay, at this point, uh, I want to count both of these first. Okay, so I, I need to mix them up really well first before I even get out um, some, some liquid to count. And there's a couple reasons for that. Number one, you want it well suspended. But number two, sometimes the cells stick together. And so you kind of want to mix it up to make sure you break up those cells that are sticking together. This is where you're going to end up adding bubbles. Your goal is not to add too many bubbles, but you can see I didn't do a good job on these. That was actually a really poor job. Okay, so we have our centrifuged cells there. And I'm going to go ahead and collect, I'm going to go ahead and collect 20 microliters of those cells and put it in one of these to count. I'm gonna admit this is where this gets tricky. Like I don't just wanna reach in there and grab one of those, right? It's gonna contaminate the whole thing. Um, so I'm just gonna kinda of do that. Really, if I was doing it, I would probably have some tweezers that I've autoclaved. So I'm gonna say these were centrifuge. So I'm gonna put a big plus sign beside those so I remember that those were centrifuged. I'm going to grab 20 microliters to count. And then I don't care what happens to this, these cells afterwards. I'm going to pipe that up and down just to make sure I get a good mix. Uh, again, these cells, it just doesn't matter. I'm going to throw those out. This doesn't have to remain sterile at all um, because we're just going to count them and throw them away. So it's important to remember what needs to be sterile and what doesn't. Okay, so I got my centrifuge cells there. Here, I'm just going to get these out of the way while I'm at it. Okay, now I want to grab my other cells. Um, but before I get them uh, to count, I'm going to go ahead and just add to the new flax. That way I have left it less of a chance of contaminating the cells and uh, messing up what's going on in these flasks.
So the first thing I know, I'm gonna want one eighth of that. There's eight mils, I'm gonna just add one mil. Makes perfect sense. Uh, so I'm gonna put like 13-ish mils of media in there beforehand. I don't really have enough in here. Uh, that's fine, I'll just use out of there. Go ahead and grab some media. So you gotta be careful because this is gonna be fill almost this whole thing. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. 13.0, it can be just close. Okay, I did a pretty good job with that, so I'm gonna use the same one to fill the second flask. Okay, so we're good there. Okay, so before I go much further, I also want to label these things, right? Like, I know this is passage 133 from previous, so I'm going to make sure I put this as 3T3 passage 134 because we're passaging it. Put my name, the date. that's good enough uh, to help label those. So now I need to mix these cells just like I mixed the previous cells because they might already start to be settling. So I'm going to mix first. Um, you could do a couple things. I could just try to suck up two mils in here and then add one mil to each. I think that is far less accurate than using the thousand microliter pipetter to do it. So I'm going to go ahead and use a thousand microliter pipetter to do that. But like I said, I want to make sure I get a good mix of cells. Okay. We did a much better job in not creating as bubbles that time. They're well mixed. They're broken up. Thousand microliters. I'm going to add a thousand to each of these. So this is where I am going to be careful about contaminating. So I'm still interested in these cells. Again, I'm going to mix again just to make sure I have a good homogeneous solution in here. Spray it in there. I've not contaminated this, so I'm going to go ahead and use it again. If I touched anything, then I would probably go ahead and just get a second pipette tip. It's not that big a deal. Okay. Those cells in there. And now I just want to rock these to make sure the, the cells get distributed evenly. Be careful not to get the filter at the top wet. Very important. Okay, so those are ready for the incubator, but one more quick thing I want to do is get out some cells so we can count. Now we don't really care about the rest of these cells. I know it's hard to think that you threw away so many millions of cells that you've been taking care of, but eventually you just get used to mass homicide. Okay. So let's go ahead and put these in the incubator. Since I haven't touched anything, these are still as about as clean as they can be, so I don't need to worry about spraying as long as I keep this hand that hasn't touched anything in here. You can stack flasks in the incubator, but if you have an opportunity, you might as well just lay them flat. Okay, now I'm gonna do my counting. And if you have a lab partner, this is when the lab partner maybe can help start cleaning up while you start counting. Okay, so I'm going to use the hemocytometer. I'm going to go ahead and get like a little paper towel here. I'm going to make sure this thing is clean. 
from the last user. Clean and dry. So we added 20 microliters of cell tension. We know we want to dilute one to one with the tripan blue, so I'm going to add 20 microliters of tripan blue to this. And the first thing we'll do is we'll start with the centrifuged cells. With the plus on them. Twenty microliters. Put it in there. I'm really gonna high pet up and down to make sure it gets mixed really well. Okay. And normally, yeah, there's a thing for tips here. Okay, and now I need to add 20 microliters to the hemocytometer slide. So I'm gonna go ahead or 10 microliters of hematosometer slide. Go ahead and stick that on there. Pull this down to 10. You don't want to be changing this dial when you have a tip on there because it could mess up your pipetter. Okay, so I'm going to get 10 microliters here. And this is just where you get practice. What we want to do is stick it under the glass in that groove gently and it will fill up the area. Capillary action. Okay, now we're done with this. I'm going to save it just in case I feel like I might need more samples though. We're going to go ahead and put it on here and start the counting. I will take some pictures so you guys can count with me. Okay, you can see there was a bunch of debris on that hematosometer slide, which makes things hard to count, um, but that's just sometimes the nature of things. So I'm going to go ahead and clean the slide with some ethanol. All right, I'm going to use this Kim wipe to make sure it's dried off really well. Clean off the cover slip. All right, so those four pictures were from the centrifuged ones. And now we're going to do the same thing with the ones I didn't centrifuge. So first I'm going to add 20 microliters. It's the same procedure, right? Add 20 microliters of tripan. And actually a lot of that debris that we saw could be from the tripan blue as well. Uh, as tripan blue gets used by hundreds of people, it tends to get nasty over time. Okay, I'm mixing well. Throw this bad boy back up before it gets spilled. Ten microliters is how much we need to add to the slide. And we'll go ahead and look at these. Okay, so now I've collected my pictures. I'm going to go ahead and clean up everything. Uh, we're pretty much done here. Uh, we've passaged the cells. We don't exactly know how many we passaged yet until we count, uh, but it doesn't matter. I knew I wanted to passage one eighth of the cells, so that's totally fine. Um, and then after we do the counting from the pictures, we'll be able to tell how many we actually put into the flask, the T75 flask. So I'm just cleaning it up. We're saving the cover slip. We're saving the hematosometer, cytometer. 
These things are pretty expensive, so you gotta be careful not to break them. The cover slips are cheap, uh, maybe a dollar each. The Hemus atometer is more like 150 bucks each. Clean up this area. All this stuff touch cells, so it's definitely biohazards. So we're gonna throw it, just dump this in the biohazard. That's fairly easy to do. Keep this in the biohazard just because it could have touched cells as well. And now we're gonna clean up our, our biological safety cabinet. Again, I know I've shown you how to do this several times, so I'll just kind of stick to the main things that I think are new this time. Um, so one thing is these uh, these pipetters. You know, I just, my hands are wet with ethanol. I just like to make sure they get wiped off a little bit. Uh, make sure these things are closed and put back. The trip's in, right? There's still four mils left to save for somebody else, so I'll go ahead and save that. Uh, so. These are cells. These were where the cells were, so all those things need bleached out. Okay, so I need to do that. This is just gonna go into biohazard trash. Um, and then my media, I'm gonna save my media. Uh, and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just consolidate by putting this into here. This PBS I said I'm gonna throw out. So this is, there's nothing wrong with this. There's no cells or anything not contaminated. So I'll dump it down the sink and throw it into the um, recycle bin. Uh, and then of course I will aspirate out. You see there's still some media left in this line, so I'm gonna throw some bleach in there, which I've already shown you how to do, so I'm not gonna show that again. Uh, but I will go ahead and do all that, what I said. Um, bleach these things, let them sit for a couple minutes so all the cells get killed. 10% bleach, throw them in the biohazard, throw this in the biohazard, and we're good to go. And so that's it for today. Uh, I think I've shown you how to now passage cells and feed cells. I'm gonna keep taking care of these cells, uh, and next time I'm gonna passage them and start a cell growth curve experiment for you guys. And so I'll get you the data for that. I don't think I need to record any more videos for that. Um, and then we will, after we do the cell growth curve, we'll get ready to do our next experiment, which is to seed some of these cells on hydrogels. And so I will show you some videos for those.